Geographical indication is uh, the name of a geographical area which has associated with it a product that is specific to that area and that owes certain of its characteristics to the attributes of that geographical area. So we're familiar with lots of examples, Scotch whiskey, for example. Many wines one can think of that whose names are associated with a particular geographical locality. Uh, it covers uh, all sorts of agricultural produce and certain man manufactured uh, produce like Venetian glass or uh, certain forms of textiles that you find in India uh, and in other many other countries. So it covers a wide range of products that are produced and that come out of a geographical locality uh, and that owe their characteristics to that locality. And that's why it's a geographical indication. First of all, development of trust in the marketplace. That if you are looking for a Scotch whisky, you would like it to be a Scotch whisky and not a whisky that's coming from another area. Uh, if you are looking for a cheese that uh, comes from a particular uh, area, or if you're looking for prosciutto di Palma, for example, uh, you're looking for that specific authentic product and not for some substitute that is perhaps made elsewhere. So it's a mechanism of trust uh, for the consumer. It's a mechanism of branding for the producers. So it's a great opportunity for producers to say, here we are, this is where you get prosciutto di palma, or whatever the case uh, might be. Uh, and it's a way of spreading the reputation of the geographical area. Uh, so it does a lot also for the sustainability of agriculture. There are different legal traditions as to how you protect uh, geographical indications. So uh, one form is a specific title in law called a geographical indication usually or an appellation of origin or denomination of origin. Uh, which we call sui generis. Some countries follow the tradition of branding geographical indications through the trademark system. So there are forms of trademarks called certification marks or collective marks, which recognise that a mark, a trademark, may be uh, owned by and managed by a collectivity. Those are two different traditions that exist in the world. But the essential idea is the same, and I think the end result um, promotes that idea of trust for the consumer and uh, value addition for the producer and the, the reputation of the geographical locality. We live in a globalised economy uh, and goods circulate and services circulate all around the world. It also means that you require protection for your geographical indication in more than one country, not just in your country of source and where the geography happens to uh, be, but in every country in which the goods are going out and in every country in which they might counterfeit those goods. One of the main tasks of the World Intellectual Property Organisation is to create systems that facilitate the life of producers and consumers by having a single international procedure for obtaining protection in more than one country. Now in the case of geographical indications, uh, we revised the original agreement, which dates from the late 1950s, we revised that in such a way to introduce a number of flexibilities. The Lisbon, original Lisbon Agreement protected only appellations of origin. Now, uh, the Geneva Act, the revised form of the Lisbon uh, Agreement, protects geographical indications, a broader notion. Well, I think one of the things to remember about the Geneva Act of the Lisbon Agreement, the latest uh, form of the uh, Lisbon Agreement, is that it accommodates both sui generis systems of protection and trademark systems of protection. So this was a big advance uh, that was made. You can apply with one single application for protection of that geographical indication. I think a great service, if I may say, to producers and agricultural producers in particular around the world. So I see no reason why 
all countries should not see a value in the Geneva Act or the Lisbon Agreement. Globalisation allows the, the movement of persons and of goods and products on a much broader basis. Uh, that creates um, the opportunity for consumers to enjoy uh, products and services that they might not otherwise have been able to uh, uh, enjoy. I think it also creates a great opportunity for developing countries because in general, in developing countries, there's a generalisation, agriculture is the main sector. And we see uh, very successful campaigns for, uh, for example, taking a particular form of, of uh, pepper grown in, uh, in Cambodia, Kampok pepper, uh, and making that a geographical indication which brands it in such a way that people can recognise, consumers can say, I had that and I would like that in the future. There are other examples from, for example, Senegal, uh, where we have uh, successfully worked with uh, Mad de Casamance, uh, which is a form of geographical indication. For developing countries, there are great opportunities here to brand their products in such a way that they will develop some consumer loyalty to that particular authentic uh, product. There's a strong association also with GIs, uh, geographical indications, and um, green environment and sustainable uh, environment. The producers in a particular area will pay attention as the value of their product is recognised through the geographical indication, they will pay attention to the preservation of the environment that has produced that value. We should remember that uh, the human factor uh, that is developed in these different geographical localities is immensely important. The way in which wine is made, champagne is a good example and the method for making champagne. Uh, there are many other examples, T cheese and the way in which the, the cheese might have grown. Um, for example, Hochfurch, uh, uh, which owed its origin to the particular conditions in caves in the region of uh, Hochfurch, which developed the mould which makes the cheese so famous. Uh, so it's, a, it's an incentive to the preservation of the environment and the sustainability of that environment uh, through a commercial value that is obtained from the excellence of the products that are produced by the environment.